responsible to physics department and the eminent former students of the department who have organized this webinar for all of us today. I would like to congratulate the Department of Physics on this note. In the scenario of COVID pandemic situation, the most important thing we are using are the masks. There are many types of masks which are available in the market. And it is a fact that we are really confused that which sort of mask we really want to use. For how many days we can use that mask and whether the printed cotton masks are really effective or not. I hope after listening to our respected speaker today, we will be able to take a definite decision. <coughs> today, we have gathered here in memory of Professor Jagadish Chandra Bhattacharya, who, uh, who is famous for his discovery and uh, who actually discovered the presence of atmosphere surrounding one of the Jupiter's satellites and the ring around Uranus. But most importantly, he did his graduation in physics from Scottish Church College in 1949. On this occasion, I would like to pay my homage towards the memory of Professor Jagadish Chandra Bhattacharya. And I pray to God for his blessings on this event. I hope in coming years also, we may be able to continue <coughs> this sort of event. I uh, want to request uh, the head of the department, Joita, that please take the initiative from your behalf to upload all these sort of very valuable lectures in our Scottish Church YouTube channel. Again, I wish all the best to the Department of Physics and the Alumni Association for organizing this webinar. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Madam. Now I request our Vice Principal, Sir, Dr. Shupratin Dash, to, to say a few words. Uh, a very good morning. Uh, really, I very eagerly look forward to uh, hearing from Dr. Bhattacharya because uh, as the principal already noted, uh, the very caption is so intriguing, so interesting. Uh, I, I hope that uh, Dr. Bhattacharya uh, in, uh, in the coming session he is going to unmask the masks and he is going to tell us all about different kinds of masks. Now, uh, in the last two years, uh, we have been used to wearing masks. It has become a part of our culture. And uh, as, as, as a very uh, obedient uh, uh, learner, uh, I have always uh, tried to wear masks uh, whenever I am outside home or in crowded places. Uh, but I know that uh, there are anti-masker contingents more in Europe and America than in uh, our countries like Russia. Uh, and uh, I, have, I know a lot of people, uh, quite scholarly people, uh, who, who, who uh, used to say that, uh, are we not right when we say that uh, uh, masks have become uh, more of uh, a facial accessory uh, than, mm -hmm. uh, than, than a safety uh, requirement? I do not know uh, uh, wherein lies the truth. Uh, but I, I always wear masks. And at the same time, I would like to add, uh, as a social scientist, that uh, uh, one thing is very clear in the last two years or nearly two years, that uh, masks have become uh, a very potent uh, agent of or agency of uh, big business, uh, crony capitalism, and all sorts of people ranging from uh, footpath, uh, uh, footpath uh, uh, what should I say, peddlers uh, to multinationals. They are now engaged in manufacturing masks. So mask is part of uh, crony capitalism today, global capitalism today. And I would just uh, add one more comment that today we know 
that uh, our art is not so good art today. Uh, 100 to 150, 100 to 150 tycoons, business tycoons, they actually control our art. They actually control what we call good art. So uh, once again, I, I, I congratulate the physics department and I uh, most cordially welcome our speaker, uh, Dr. Arnav Bhattacharjo, and really I eagerly look forward to what he says. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Shudev Bhattacharjo, President of Former Students Association, Scottish Church, Former Students Association of Physics, Scottish Church College, to say a few words. Thank you, Joita. Uh, dear Professor Mudumanjari Mandal, Principal Scottish Church College, Professor Supratim Das, Vice Principal Scottish Church College, Professor Arna Bhattacharya, Dr. Joita Choudhury, Department <coughs> of Physics, Scottish Church College, Dr. Pradeep Mondol, Secretary, uh, Physics Alumni Association, and other participants of this virtual meeting. Good morning, everyone. As you are all aware, we have assembled here on the occasion of the 10th Jagadish Chandra Bhattacharya Memorial Lecture, being organized by former student association of physics in collaboration with the Department of Physics of Scottish Church College. Today's speaker is Professor Arnav Bhattacharya, Center Director, Omni Center for Science and Education, and also a faculty member of the Department of Condensed Matter Physics and Material Science, TIFR Bobby. On behalf of the association, I welcome you all. And also, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the association and personally to wish you all a very warm greetings for this festival season. Keeping in view this uh, significantly large number of young participants that I noticed in the list of attendants of today's program, who may, not, who may not be fully aware of the work and contribution of late Professor JCB, I feel it will be appropriate at the beginning to say very few introductory remarks about late Professor Bhattacharya. Professor Bhattacharya did his, uh, as has already been pointed out, uh, by uh, the principal. Professor uh, Bhattacharya did his uh, graduation in physics from this college and received his degree in 1949. After graduation, he joined the Department of Radio Physics and Electronics of Calcutta University and gradually shifted to the field of experimental astrophysics research. He not only made very significant contribution in astronomy and astrophysics research, but also paved the way for building up a very strong research base in this field in India. In the process, he built institutions, state-of-the-art instrumentation centers, trained a bright new generation of astronomers in India, which subsequently led to the creation of a very competent academic faculty. Professor Bhattacharya was the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics from 1982 to 1990 and was the emeritus professor of IIA till 1997. He was a fellow of Indian Academy of Science and INSA. He became the president of Astronomical Society of India in 1986. He was bestowed with many such honors and awards during his illustrious career. He passed away on 4th of June, 2012. Following his demise, his admirers and students decided to start this memorial lecture series in physics department of this college under the guidance of the Department of Physics and former students of former students association of physics. And this is the 10th lecture of the series. And we all feel very proud and happy that you have been able to continue this program very smoothly without a break. There is no time and scope for me in this very brief welcome address to dwell in further details on different scientific aspects of Professor JCB. And I hope uh, uh, our secretary will uh, mention some of these works in his address. As I have already mentioned, in today's lecture will be delivered by Professor Arnav Bhattacharya. And as it reflects from his talk on the subject, mask unmasked, dot, 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 it is of paramount importance to all of us in this present day present pandemic scenario, and all of us are waiting eagerly to hear from him. And I really do not want to step further into the time schedule and delay the process. We are thankful to Arnav to give us his time for this lecture in spite of his very busy schedule. 
I will request uh, Dr. Pradeep Mondol to formally introduce the speaker uh, to the audience. Let me end my address with deep thanks to all concerned, the authorities of the college, head of the Department of Physics and different staff members, my fellow colleagues in the Physics Alumni Association for their guidance, support, and efforts to make this program a success for so many years. Thank you all. I will now hand over the mic to Joita. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. I request, uh, now the technical session will be conducted by Dr. Pradipto Kumar Mundol, Secretary, former Students Association of Physics, Scottish Church College. I request Pradipto to start this technical session. Am I audible? Yes. Oh. From the stu <coughs> former Students Association, I, Pradipto Kumar Mondal, welcome you all. Every year, we conduct Professor J.C. Hotchard's memorial lecture. And we try to make this, top, make this subject of this le lecture uh, out of the field. Professor J.C. Hotchard was our alumni. He awarded his uh, alumni, he awarded his uh, BSc degree in 1949 from Calcutta University. After graduation, he uh, carried out his career in radio physics and electronics in Calcutta University. And there he actually uh, shifted to the experimental astrophysics. During his research career, he performed several path-breaking experiments in astrophysics. Out of them, uh, he is well known for his discovery of the Jupiter satellite, Ganymede, and the ring around Uranus. Another revolutionary discovery was to find the rings of the Saturn and six main asteroid belts. One of which named after one of, one of named Bhattacharya after him. After that, later in his life, he was he became the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics from 1982 to 1990. He was fellow of Indian Academy of Science and INSA. He became the president of the Astronomical Society of India in 1986. The present day structure of the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, IIA, owes much of the <coughs> much to Dr. Hattacharya. He died on 4th June 2012. After his death, uh, our, <coughs> our then head of the department, Dr. Arup Roy, proposed to start a memorial lecture uh, for memorial lecture after <clears throat> for, for his name. And he also funded for that. And first JC Hurch's lecture was conducted September 2012. Today it is 10th. Now let me let me introduce a brief, uh, introduce today's speaker, Dr. Bhattacharya, Dr. Arnav Bhattacharya. Dr. Bhattacharya is a scientist, thinker, and science communicator at the, at the TIFR, Mumbai, where he leads a research group in semiconductor optoelectronics. He is also the center director of TIFR Somi Bhava Center for Science Education. He obtained his BTEC degree from IIT Bombay. He did his MS and PhD from University of Wisconsin Medicine. He did postdoc at Ferdinand Brown Institute in Bali. After that, he joined TIFR. Beyond the research lab, Dr. Hotricharya is passionate about science outreach and enjoys talking about science, demonstrating science experiments. 
to all audience, particularly school and college students. He pioneered Chai and Why, Mumbai's popular science cafe. He is presently the chair of science, popularization, and public outreach at TIFR. He received the 2010 Homi Bhava Award in Science Education. Again, 2012, Chevening Rolls Royce Fellowship also awarded to him uh, <coughs> innovation leadership in 2007 by uh, INSA Indira Gandhi Prize also awarded for popularization of science. Other than this, he had interest in several other things, music, cooking, hiking, etc. Now, I request Dr. Arnav Bhattacharya to start our today's lecture. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pradeep Tudak. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Am I audible? And uh, can yes, you fit my video maybe? And I will also try and see if I can share the screen. Okay, so can you, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, it is coming. Okay, great. The only problem is now I can't see, I can't see the Google Meet window, uh, but it's okay. We will, uh, we will, um, assume that it's there. So please shout if something goes wrong. So um, um, thank you, Professor Mondal. Thank you, Professor Das and uh, Pradeep Tudas especially uh, for inviting me to this, give this uh, lecture. It's a privilege and an honor, and I'll explain why in a bit. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Deepa Shankar, who is a student in TIFR, uh, one of your alumni, uh, who actually uh, you know told me about this and convinced me that I should do it. Uh, so before we get to the topic of masks, okay, I want to say that uh, this is, and I didn't realize it, I actually did not realize it when I accepted the offer. Uh, this turns out to be a deeply personal uh, memory, uh, personal uh, links, both to Scottish Church College itself and to Professor JCB. Uh, I would not have been in science today if it was not for Scottish Church College, though I am not an alumnus of the college or I have ever studied there. Um, so the in the late 1970s, early 1980s, when I was a young child, uh, we used to be sort of we used to go to Kolkata every summer vacation, winter vacation. Um, I am I am born and brought up in Mumbai. And uh, we stayed with my uncle uh, in uh, very close to uh, Scottish in uh, Horituki Bagan Lane. And uh, uh, he eventually became the, he was the, uh, in the chemistry department. He eventually became principal for a few years. I think it was in the 1980s, Operation Bhattacharya. And uh, he used to allow me to go to the lab. I was a, wanted to always play with things. And I remember this, uh, you know, old chemistry lab where uh, I used to go and uh, play with things. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I also remember in those days, some of the places there had a DC power supply and the fans were very different. Um, so that's that Scottish. And there was a there was a there was a lane behind the shortcut to go there, which, uh, you know, had had a very nice name named after some one of the older principles, I think, but it also had a Bengali name, which I cannot take over here. Uh, anyway, and uh, coming back to JC Bhattacharya. So he also happens to be a one level uh, removed uncle of ours. And uh, whenever he came to Mumbai, uh, he would stay with us. And from him, I have heard stories growing up of the ring system of Uranus and the occultation um, that would, what was used. And then as I grew up, as I was in high school, I got more and more interested in astronomy. Uh, and uh, I think the turning point was 1986 uh, when Halley's Comet was there. And uh, uh, he had brought some very nice pictures from Kabalur, uh, the observatory there. And um, when I decided that I wanted to do astronomy, I actually took some vacation classes in astronomy in 1998 to try and become do astronomy. I had a uh, talk with him again. Uh, unfortunately, my career is such that I never landed up being an astronomer. Uh, I got into semiconductors and material science and uh, everything else. Uh, but I think I'm still a pretty good amateur astronomer. I'm still on the ASI <laughs> outreach committee now. And uh, by the way, I hope you know that recently, 
in Kavalur, uh, the 1.3 meter telescope that they have, they have a big uh, 2. Point something meter the Vainubappu telescope. But the next telescope, the 1.3 meter telescope is now called the JCBT. It's the JC Bhattacharya telescope. So it has been named after him. Uh, okay, let's move on. So uh, I am a storyteller. Okay. And uh, today's story is going to be about something that as has already been said, we know, you know, a lot about which is masks. And I'm going to tell you the story of how I got into it. Why is a guy in semiconductor physics suddenly doing masks? Okay. So um, I'll tell you how COVID changed things and how I got into this. Uh, the experiments which we did with Tata Memorial Hospital. And then we did a lot more fun stuff. And um, uh, if there's time, we can talk about ultraviolet light since this is a, a physics audience. But the reason I chose this, this topic is because initially I was not sure uh, the audience, what was the audience going to be like? Um, I thought I should take a topic which is uh, connect science and society. It connects science and society in a way where you can see the interdisciplinary nature of science. This is not something limited to physics or biology or engineering or anything of that sort. And it also highlights a very important aspect of science today which is that science is a collaborative endeavor. It's something we do with people around the world. It's something we do, you know, and, and this, this links that are, are, are formed have been uh, quite amazing for me in the last uh, year and a half. Okay. So uh, I don't know how we're going to do question answers. I mean, I cannot actually see the live chat. So if there is a question on chat, that's important. Somebody please speak it out and I will try and take it right then. Otherwise we'll do questions in the end. Uh, is that okay? Uh, I think uh, you can finish up the uh, lecture and then we will uh, take up the questions. Okay, all right. So, so, so now... that in questions will be, uh, I just request all the people to put their questions in the chat box so that after the lecture, uh, uh, one of them can see these uh, uh, questions and can answer. Is it okay? okay? Great. So, so yeah. I would like to thank a lot of people who have contributed to the, the stories behind this that we'll talk about. So, there is uh, Shankar Ghosh, who's been sort of my partner in crime. And my student, Emroj, who is hopefully listening today. Emroj Hussain is, I think, the 2012 batch BSc physics from uh, Scottish as well. Uh, he was my student, just graduated last year, and he was stuck in Mumbai during the pandemic and you know, turned out to be a uh, lifesaver in a way that I had somebody to help me work with on, on masks. A lot of the work is done with Tata Memorial Hospital, and you know the doctors there are, are just amazing what they've been able to do in the middle of this pandemic. Um, there's also an international consortium called the N95 Decon Consortium with whom I have worked. And so many people have sent us masks and helped us to make things uh, and all. Uh, so, and, you know, I've unfortunately had to be away from home uh, during the pandemic. And uh, I would really like to thank everybody at home as well. Okay, so let's start. Every culture through history has had masks, right? Whether it is for protection, whether it is for disguise, whether it is for performance, um, you know, there are, there has there have always always been masks, and here is a selection of masks from from history, right from you know uh, almost nine thousand years ago till the present. Different cultures have had masks, and I said protection. Well, the first masks, if you look at the Inuit masks in northern uh, you know uh, North America, uh, where there is a lot of snow and ice to protect themselves from the reflection of the sun, they used masks. Even for pathogens, in the 17th century, when there was a plague, people had these weird bird-shaped masks in which they put some nice smelling things because, of course, they didn't know what was causing it. But the plague doctor would come with this bird-like mask. And today, of course, you know, the COVID warriors in the hospitals are in full attire with masks. And all of us have are wearing either a mask or a N95 or a dupatta or something, but we have to cover ourselves. So there are so many types of masks cloth masks, N95 masks, surgical masks. What is the difference between all of these? And of course, what's the physics? We'll come to that. Now, there are two basic types of masks. One is what is called an, an N95 mask, which looks either like this, or you have this kind of a mask. And the other masks are the surgical masks, the blue ones, which typically look something like this. Okay. And the idea is the surgical mask is something that the doctor wears. It prevents my own droplets to go on a patient when I'm, you know, cutting him up or something. Okay. On the other hand, so this is meant to protect from large droplets. 
it's loose by design it is not sealed at the sides so air leaks out from the sides on the other hand an n95 mask is designed to fit tightly here and it is designed to filter out very small particles okay now what is small what is large physicists we will worry about numbers we'll come to it in a bit but first Let's start at the very beginning because I'm assuming that not everybody is a physicist over here. I want to keep it as general as possible. What does a mask do? A mask is filtering, and since N95s in, are in the in the in the in the stock, just remember what is that N? It means it's not oil resistant. Okay, and 95 means that 95% of particles of 0.3 nanometer size and above. Okay, 300 nanometers, 0. Point, sorry, 0.3 microns, 300 nanometers. 95% of the particles at this size are filtered. Okay, that's the 95. Now, first, let's see what makes a good mask. Obviously, number one, filtration. It has to keep out whatever you don't want to breathe. But it should not make breathing difficult. See, if I take a stainless steel butty and I put it on my nose, that's 100% efficient. Nothing goes through a stainless steel butty. but you can't breathe through it you'll suffocate so there is always a compromise between filtration and breathability the other thing is it must fit if the mask doesn't fit well if there are leaks at the side or leaks near the nose it's not filtering very well also if a mask is not comfortable and this is something which we people forget if it hurts your ears if you have elastic bands which are going to hurt your ears or if the, it's going to leak and it's going to if you're like me who wears glasses the glasses get fogged up you're not going to use that mask so you know it's not very useful then so a good mask combines all of this and filtration is something which we study from the at least the fifth or the sixth standard this is sixth standard cbsc book where it says you can filter your chai uh, through a strainer you can you know pick out stones from grain and the same chapter has this very nice figure of somebody in a construction site filtering the sand by removing the big stones from it and getting finer sand and this is basically what we have to do in a mask so i have a mask on one side there are particles in the air we'll worry about what those particles are i don't want those particles coming in i don't want to breathe them so this means now we are going to get a little bit more into specifics what sizes am i interested in now remember you know most of the typical pollutants smoke particles pollen etc they are like you know 2 microns to 10 microns and above okay that's why the pollution numbers you hear of pm 2.5 and pm 10 that's the number of these large pollutants that are there bacteria are also between somewhere like 0.3 microns to 10 microns viruses are much smaller viruses range between 20 nanometers to 300 nanometers the sars cov2 virus is about 160 nanometers and of course you have fragments of all of these so it depends on what you want to filter but remember remember that it is very unlikely it is very rare that a single viral particle is going to be in the air most likely the particle is coming from somebody who is coughing breathing it out etc and this particle is in a droplet of saliva which is much larger so practically practically it is important even if you have something which can filter out most of the large particles yes if you are in an environment where there is lots of viruses you know in the hospital where you are working with a covid covid patient then maybe you do need this protection at 3.3 microns but for most of us as long as you can get the micron and larger particles filtered out you're doing good but first let's understand and now given that so this is a bit because this is a physics audience you know how do we somebody who's got cold cough whatever is coughing out particles whether it is tb you know covid it's all the same how do these particles get produced what is the size of these particles okay now how are these droplets generated what happens is our throat there's a mucus lining there is something that goes and triggers it could be a dust could be something else okay and the body doesn't like it it's going to send a gust of air to try and remove that particle this gust of air is also going to break down this film of mucus that is there and throw that out also as drops okay and this is very basic physics of fluid instabilities if you have a layer of a fluid if you have a fast moving jet of of 
air moving on the crest, this layer is going to get ripples. And eventually, at a higher speed, you will build up a Kelvin-Helmholtz in instability, breaking up this particle, this layer into small particles. Okay, and this is something you see in nature. You see it in clouds. You see it in, in if you look at the, uh, recently there was this magnetic storm and uh, from of solar particles. When the solar wind interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, you also get these little loops and things being, being sent out. So this, the physics is a completely different length scale. The physics is the same, what is happening inside the throat and what is happening in the sky or in space, wherever else. Now, the droplets are of various sizes. So depending on whether you're talking, breathing through your nose, breathing through your mouth because you're exercising, <coughs> coughing, you know, you will have different sizes. And as you can see, coughing, the last one generates a lot of very small particles. Okay. So this is particle size, small particles, large particles. Coughing generates a lot of these very small particles because of the mechanism that I just showed you. Now, when you have a filter, okay. You also must think of what size particle can I filter in an ideal world, in an ideal world, if I have a gap, you know, physicists love to think of things as everything is a sphere. So you think I can fit, you know, a particle. So to first approximation, if I have a gap, particles of that size will go through. However, we have to be careful because in the real world, particles are not spherical. So here is a gap. Obviously, these small particles will go through. And a particle which is much larger, if it is a sphere, will get blocked by this. But suppose you had a particle which was asymmetric, which was thin and long. Depending on how that particle comes, so this one will go through. On the other hand, if it came like this, it wouldn't go through. So you have to worry about multiple length scales in the problem. Right? Now, any particle that is going to come is sort of there are fibers in your mask. It's going to come and hit it, get attached. Some of them will come, some of them will get removed. So you have to worry about at what rate are things sticking, at what rate are things getting detached from it. Right. And there are various ways in which, in which filtration happens. The simplest thing is, of course, if I have a fiber, so I have a mesh of fibers in the cloth or whatever I have, a particle comes. Luckily, if the particle is, remember, is not, it's, it's following the streamlines of the air. These are very small particles. By chance, it may hit it and it is stuck. So Kolkata, everybody likes football. It's like the goalkeeper has managed to stop the, the, the football being kicked. Direct interception. This is one way of doing it. However, there are other things as well. Remember, particles have a finite mass. And even though they are flowing, uh, they, cannot, they cannot always bend at the same thing. They could get thrown out because of inertia. So inertia will help you also intercept some particles. They cannot follow the streamlines of the airs around, or air around the fibers. So there's inertial, inertial filtration. There's also diffusion. Uh, this is like the, the famous drunk walk. There are particles which are diffusing and uh, diffusion will, will make sure that some more particles hit your fiber. Okay. Is this enough? Is this enough? Because of all this, effectively, though you have a small particle, because there is diffusion, there is inertial impaction and all that, the particle behaves as if it is much larger. So even, you know, even if you have, you, even if you have a gap like this, you might be able to stop small particles because they behave as if they are larger particles. So far we have looked at this, but this is not enough. And I'll explain in a bit. The final mechanism that we need is electrostatics. We will add a charge. The charge attracts particles on a dry day. You can you know, comb your hair and or take a comb and it will attract some small pieces of paper. So even remember your, your particle is mostly in a droplet of saliva. Even if there is, even if the particle, I mean, if it's charged anyway, it will get attracted. But even if it's not charged, as long as I can have an electric field somewhere on a gradient of an electric field somewhere, I can trap these particles. Okay. And this is what is needed. Remember this chart I showed you for the large sizes. If you have micron sized particles, micron and above simple filtration, the mechanical filtration is enough. However, when you go to very small particles, when you want to go to sub micron without electrostatics, it's near impossible. Let me explain. So an N95 mask, which is this, has actually many layers. 
Okay. Of course, there's an outer layer too, which is typically hydrophobic so that it doesn't uh, get wet. Uh, but the, the main filtration is done by the middle layer, which is very fine particles, which are charged. Now, in a cloth mask, if I had a simple cloth mask, there it is inertial filtration or mechanical filtration. The pore size determines the filtration efficiency. Now, if I want to make a mask such that you can filter very small particles, I can make the pore size very small. If I make the pore size smaller than 0.3 microns, 300 nanometers, it would be unbreathable. It would be unbreathable. It would be so difficult to breathe through it. Hence, what the N95 mask relies on is an intermediate layer of fibers with electrostatic charge. This charge attracts small particles, so I can have gaps which are large, but they still filter very small particles. And this is why reusing these masks is difficult because if you wash it, etc., you remove the charge. Okay. This is just an example of a mask. Uh, this is actually a, a three-layer surgical mask, uh, which is the same construction of, of a N95. You can see this marker. Uh, don't, don't worry about the, you know, just look at either the top row or the bottom row. Just look at the marker. The yellow marker is 200 microns. Okay, 200 microns. So the 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 inner layer and the outer layer have fibers which have pretty large, very large gaps. Okay, this is like your standard cloth. The middle layer is very fine fibers, but even this, the gaps are not submicron. The gaps are in you know in microns, but it still filters 0.3 nanometer part 0.3 micron particles because of the electrostatic charge. Okay. And also remember, it's not just one layer of fibers in which something is getting trapped. It's actually, you know, for that particle, it might be, you know, the, the thing might be half a millimeter thick, the, the layer of filtration layer is half a millimeter. But in 3D with fibers, it's very dense fibers, it's a mesh. And for a particle to get through that and come out, it's, it's difficult, it get, gets trapped. That's how, you, that's the, the logic. Now, getting back to numbers. One of the biggest reasons for confusion between these surgical masks and N95s and also the reason that you get cheated and there are lots of unscrupulous vendors is because of the norms which say that a surgical mask is qualified by its bacterial filtration efficiency which has to be 95% for 3 micron particles. On the other hand, an N95 has to be have an efficiency of 95% for 0.3 micron particles, 10 times different. But many people will just do a test at 3 microns and say, huh, 95% efficiency and 95. Okay. So this is, this is, this is a big, big uh, uh, thing. Okay. Of course, there's fit, right? If you have an N95 mask and you leave it like this, it's not doing anything at all. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this window. So now coming to the story, that's the physics background. So the in last end of March, the lockdown is announced and uh, Mumbai becomes very quiet. I thought I will get some time to you know write some papers, etc. But one day I get a phone call from Tata Memorial Hospital saying that they are running out of N95 masks. They need to figure out some way to decontaminate and use it now, like you know, as soon as possible. Please do something, help us. Okay. Now, what can we do? You know, we are, we are, I'm a physicist, I'm an engineer by training. I'm not, I'm not, I don't work with bacteria and viruses and all this, but we know that there is enough medical literature telling us how to kill the virus, how to zap it, how to make it inactivated. However, you must make sure whatever you do, whether it is gamma rays and radiation, whether it is boiling it, autoclaving it, you know, it should not damage the mask. The filtration efficiency should not change. And that is a physics problem. Now a mask tester. If you wanted to buy a machine that tests the filtration efficiency of masks, that's 20 lakhs plus. There's a lockdown, difficult to get it. Even if you had 20 lakhs, you couldn't get it because the US was not exporting them anymore. Everybody wants these. So how do you measure filtration efficiency? So the idea is this, a simple way, as long as I can count the number of particles in a given volume of air, right? So I have some particles in the ambient, the air is dusty here. We will suck this air through a filter and measure how many particles are going through the mask with a particle counter. If I can count this, the efficiency of the mask is basically one minus whatever went through the mask divided over whatever was there. And luckily we found that 
thanks to this air quality you know concerns pm 2.5 pm 10 etc there were a lot of places where they had pollution monitoring equipment pollution monitoring equipment used these small sensors which actually count particles so we thought can we repurpose them to make a mask tester so initially of course we were trying experiments with uh, you know with a with a helium neon laser trying to do some scattering trying to see how we could do it eventually we got one of these particle counters this aqi sensor you know and, and this we were working at that time almost 24 hours a day uh, and within a few days we actually had a prototype of a mask tester remember this is made during the hard lockdown uh, this is made from just whatever was lying in the lab and at home uh, you can see this ball is stolen from children's toys there's some blocks of wood put here uh, we don't have a mannequin on which we can put it on the face we just use a ball and and tie the the mask around it uh, this is how it was made but you know this is the beginning as they say in hindi movies picture abhi bhi baki hai so lots of interesting details to come so we had this uh, uh, what is called the the uh, you know uh, the mask integrity test resource you have to give it a cool name you call it mitra uh, and essentially you have a ball on which you can keep your mask you suck the air with a pump uh, through a flow meter and a a this uh, uh, the, the little device which the particle counter and uh, uh, th this is how it looks actually this is how it looks this is the, the, the part of it i can go through it later if you want in details uh, but uh, we made this for not for 20 lakhs but for 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 20000 for about 20000 and we decided that this is something which uh, you know uh, this was a pandemic we had to get it out to as many people as possible we we said we're not going to license it or anything we just put it out on github open source anybody can use it and again you know embroge um, your alumnus our student fantastic job in helping us do this along with uh, the rest of the uh, folks who were there now once you have a mask tester this is the beginning this is the beginning to do of course a decontamination which tata memorial wants us to do but we also we also were able so every mask that so tata memorial is getting donations of masks and as has been pointed out by professor das there are lots of unscrupulous elements selling masks so they got lots of fake masks we unearthed a big racket so it allows you to test masks uh, we could do some cool experiments i might come to that if we have time on electrostatics of masks uh, we helped lots of different groups around the country measure masks and measure materials um we applied for some startup grant and helped a startup uh, make a company to do this and we did some fun things which i'll talk about later but of course remember that the whole idea was to decontaminate to reuse a mask okay so the idea is i want to zap these virus things but i don't want to change the filtration efficiency now again just remember that there's a lot of you know hype junk whatever you call it in the literature in the press popular press whatsapp university N95 masks have always been designed for single use okay obviously the company wants to make profit okay and nobody you know when there was no pandemic there was no real use for this you know people it was designed mainly for uh, not just for medical people right also for people scraping walls and working in mines and all that okay now there's a crisis you want to decontaminate now since this is a science audience just remember decontamination means as long as i have got 99.9% of the germs out i'm happy what is called a three log reduction in pathogen count it's not sterilization sterilization requires five log reduction 99.999 okay now mostly in reuse just remember that it's not the mask filtration as we have found and all these masks which are here you can see this guy's ear strap is there only on one side uh, you know some other guy's nose clip comes out it's it's not often the mask which is a limitation if you take any mask and you wear it 10 times it's going to you're very likely to break the the nose clip okay so um, uh, now you know people have shown a lot of things have done a lot of work uh, especially my colleagues in this n95 decon group uh, i was also part of them alcohol so you know alcohol sanitizer rub your hands 20 seconds done wash your hands with soap and water you're done unfortunately all this removes the charge if you remove the charge efficiency is gone bleach same problem also you don't want any chlorine residue on your mask ethylene oxide used a lot for for uh, sterilizing needles and all these uh, syringes and all uh, you don't very risky you don't want anything where you can breathe in you don't want any residues gamma ray radiation kills the virus but unfortunately the the gamma rays completely destroy the polymer structure so it reduces the efficiency uh, 
sunlight does not have enough uv to to sort of do anything to the virus there are processes that are available there's hydrogen peroxide vapor which is possible at the large scale industrial process the easiest thing is time the sars cov2 virus does not survive for more than 96 to 190 120 hours on any surface so if you get what what most of the people in mumbai in the hospitals do they have five masks you use mask one on monday after you use it you keep it outside in a you know well ventilated place use mask two on 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 tuesday etc etc after six days you can use your mask one again right not doing anything of course heat is the one easy way to do it and uvc so i will in the indian context heat was the easiest one and um, i thought let's use heat that's the easiest thing to do because we want to do it quickly we don't have five masks you know we need a lot of masks you could give everybody five masks right uh, so i am a scientist of course so i start off by wanting to do proper experiments i stuck temperature sensors on masks you know measured the temperature profile of a small oven um, you know did some experiments following what protocols we knew that 70 degrees should be enough and then we we you know we we had a lot of fun doing it we tried with you know the the chai water boiler and lots of things we had lots of fun anyway now does it work yes we did experiments with n95 masks uh, with different companies they are around 95% and you can subject them to five heat cycles nothing happens same thing for these surgical masks you can do five heat cycles nothing happens uh, of course you get them in different qualities I'll come to that later and then then one day we took everything and went to tata memorial hospital where it's not one mask but you have to scale up to 200 masks a day 200 masks a day this is like nowadays maybe in a mall you find these big cabinets where they store cold drinks and cold stuff and all the butter and cheese and all similar thing hot hot cabinet 70 degrees okay now you have to do something remember at this point last year in april may we knew nothing about covid we didn't know anything about the virus everybody's paranoid right once i have a mask i assume that the outer surface is contaminated right also the inner surface this is somebody's mask i don't want to touch it so you want to have a method where so remember that uh, somebody had done such a method using putting the mask in a box so that they could control temperature and humidity but this requires you to put the mask out and put it in a box somebody has to touch the mask right we wanted it to be something where even an unskilled operator can do it so uh, you know we we tata memorial hospital is a cancer hospital their chemotherapy department has lots of vomit bags so we just use those we ask the doctors to write their name on the bag put your mask inside just drop the mask in the bag keep it open so nobody touches the mask the bag goes in the oven you can see this oven loaded with bags and do it and the other thing is you have to develop a protocol how everybody in the hospital is going to use it detailed descriptions of exactly what it is to do so you know doing an experiment on five masks but designing something which can be used in the real world three shifts a day by somebody who is not a physicist or an engineer uh, is is uh, something which uh, was a big learning experience a massive learning experience for me and extremely satisfying it was extremely satisfying i mean i've published probably 100 papers but to to see something you've made being used in a hospital three shifts a day 10000 masks gone through this process more than 1500 doctors nurses etc used it uh, this is perhaps the first large hospital real world demonstration of heat based decontamination of these masks but of course you know tata memorial is one of the better hospitals in india it's one of the better hospitals okay uh, by the way i don't know how i'm doing on time because uh, i tend to get carried away and speak so if i'm if you want me to just you know wrap up i can always uh, jump and uh, shut down things if you're enjoying the stories we go ahead you know what if you don't have the resources that tata memorial has what if you want to do it simply so i i you know what if you don't have electricity one of the easiest things to make is hot water i can burn some wood leaves paper whatever i can make hot water and what you can do is you can take two dishes in your kitchen so we want to see can we do it in the kitchen so you don't put the mask in water you put hot water in a in a in a big bowl you put a smaller bowl inside it and put your mask inside it cover it for some time does this work so again this is in collaboration with manu prakash's group uh, they were trying to do it um, so we also did it in our kitchen in india again i am doing science so i have connected temperature sensors and all on on my masks and then we decided that hey we can do one step better why don't you uh, why don't we do why why one mask at a time so uh, at least i don't know in kolkata but in mumbai almost every household has these idli cookers 
where you know you have these different you know you put it in a pressure cooker they have trays with little depressions where you put the atta for making it least and uh, we can make this so th that we can do stacks of masks so uh, <laughs> by the way if you had asked me you know one year ago that can you get a picture of a idli cooker in your kitchen inside a scientific journal i would have said are you joking but th this picture is actually from this is published work okay this is this is published in plus one so uh, uh, of course we did a lot of there's a lot of data along with it as well so again as a scientist i mean i have measured temperature and humidity profiles measured the efficiency and you know we can do this at home in a very simple manner you can decontaminate masks uh, without any impact on the efficiency but there's more fun we can do. So I have friends, thanks to my outreach in all parts. I was working with Amoj, uh, who is Amoj is a uh, uh, IISC graduate who is now working with a tribal community in Nandurbar in Maharashtra, uh, making solar concentrators. So we thought, can we use solar energy? And yes, we can. Um, of course, at that time, it was already June where the monsoon was coming. So he moved to Ahmedabad where the, it was still sunny. And we can use both the typical uh, the, the box cookers or mirror mirror furnaces uh, you have to be very care careful you want you don't want to go beyond 10x concentration you want to just uh, you want to you know decontaminate masks not incinerate masks i mean we can also make solar incinerators for masks very easy uh, and uh, you know we used to uh, I mean, he did these very nice experiments uh, you measure uh, this is typically you can very i mean you you got to take care that it doesn't go above 90 degrees uh, you don't want to melt the plastics so these are all polypropylene fibers, the, the thing in the mask. And sometimes you, we saw very interesting things. So typically the temperature in the day goes up, stays there and then comes down. And uh, 21st June, the very interesting data. Um, so there is this very big dip. And this was the day I was, we were wondering what it is. And this was the day there was a solar eclipse in a partial solar eclipse that day. So it's very nice. Uh, I've done a lot of other interesting things. There was a very large, uh, so these surgical masks, can you wash them? You know, why do we have to use a new one? How can you wash them? What happens to their filtration efficiency? Yes, the charge will go, but sometimes they don't have charge. Does it matter? So we actually, and you get them in all kinds of qualities. There are masks which are, you know, three rupees, there are masks which are seven rupees, there are masks which are 10 rupees. What's the difference? And of course, the difference is charge. Some of the best masks are actually as good as N95 in the material. Uh, so we, we actually, uh, I was working with a group of doctors in Bangladesh uh, um, and uh, uh, with them, I, we, they wanted to do a experiment, very large uh, RCT uh, with 350,000 people uh, in different villages on mask usage, uh, comparing cloth and surgical masks and washing them. So all the washing studies, actually the data is from my lab. Uh, we actually did a lot of, uh, lot of washing studies in, in the lab, washing them with you know, the cheapest way possible with a detergent bar, uh, wash it, dry it, measure the efficiency. So we did a lot of work. And the summary is, you know, you can wash it uh, five times, three times, no problem. Nothing much happens to the efficiency. The initially it decreases a bit, but then it stays constant. And uh, even if you if you take one of these masks, which is really good, which is like 95% when new, uh, you will go down to about 80%, but 80% is still better than a normal cloth mask. So, uh, you know, uh, then of course we did some science. Um, and remember, all this while I have told you that the uh, the uh, main thing that makes an N95 and N95 is electrostatics. And the problem is that uh, the mask, uh, when you, once you wash the mask, your, your uh, electrostatic charge goes away. Can you put it back? And this is a work which is, again, uh, Ambrose is, uh, is the first author on this, uh, which we did last year on trying to recharge electrostatically recharge a mask, uh, you need to put, of course, uh, you put it the simplest way to recharge, you want a high field, you put it between a capacitor. Um, a capacitor is simply two metal plates in which you sandwich your mask to a high voltage power supply. Now in the middle of a lockdown, how do you get a high voltage power supply? Simple, cheap. Well, you take one of these mosquito bats, you know, the, the thing for mosquito bats, um, you take them, they have a, a, a simple high voltage supply, you can connect it. And we, so what happens is um, when new, the mask is about 95% efficient. You wash it, it's down to 75 since the charge has gone. You keep it here and charge it, recharge it. After a while, you can get back to your 95%. So after this, we thought, can we make a smart mask? Something like this is continually charged. So we tried to make a mask, which was uh, 
a holder with a cartridge where you could put in a, a filter element which had a mesh on both sides which would where you could apply a voltage and charge it of course this is just a prototype and a concept but it was been fun to to see all the different aspects of uh, you know science that you could do and physics that you could do with this so uh, i it's yeah uh, we'll stop here i can talk a little bit more on 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 practical issues i'm sure there are going to be lots of questions so you know we we built a compact low cost filtration efficiency setup Uh, to test these masks, uh, and you find that you know there are there are tons and tons and tons of masks. Not all of them are the same quality. Not all of them are are thing. It's not just the mask material. It's also the fit and straps. And you will see masks where uh, you know the strap comes off. I mean, uh, and we also found. I've put the link in the chat. Actually, there is a huge proliferation of poor quality masks in the market. Some of which is not deliberate and unfortunate because many of the labs. case last year did not have facilities to test the mask the government did not have a good scalable system for bis uh, uh, you know uh, certification uh, but a lot of it is also i would think deliberate because this is a easy way to make money uh, just sell a mask everybody is buying a mask uh, for the n95 masks you can decontaminate and use them and it's actually a very easy it's it's, it's not very easy um we did some really wonderful work with the doctors at Tata Memorial and uh, also it was fun exploring you know the solar and hot water and you know low cost methods for for doing this and i would say even these surgical masks you can at least wash them 5 6 times no problem and for me i think the reason to do it is not so much physics but environment this is all melt blown or spun bond polypropylene these are all non biodegradable fibers just think if all of us are going to throw one of these masks out every day how much of medical waste are we going to generate at least if we have can wash them and reuse them a few times it's much better and just for that aspect i think reuse of masks is something we should look at and in the last year and a half now i have had a lot of fun learning learning new things i am trained as a semiconductor person i'm trained as a material scientist i didn't know a word of masks when i started I had a lot of fun learning about masks, and I hope I could share some of this excitement with you. I will end with a much more <laughs> uh, interesting picture, which is reminds me of Kolkata. It probably is Kolkata looking at the trams. Is that in India we can do a lot of research on making the best mask, or you know how to recycle masks. but if people do not wear a mask that covers their nose and mouth there is no point we can't blame anybody else then on that note thank you a lot thanks again for this wonderful opportunity and i'm happy to take questions thank you sir for its such exciting lecture i think today's lecture will help us to increase our knowledge about different kind of mask for today's life we also learned that how a mask could be used in most efficient way it make me happy that our, my student embroj is working with you thank you again now i request my colleague to joydeep mitra to conduct the question answer session okay so as uh, already have said if you have any uh, questions or server you can you can uh, write those questions in your chat box uh, so that we can uh, see uh, those questions joydeep may yes, i ask yes. you a simple question sure 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 you can go ahead yes uh, yes go ahead professor bhattacharya this is the question regarding the charging of n95 mask uh you applied a high voltage supply the simple circuit so charging like a capacitor in a, in case of a dc source absolutely so, it is a dc source on a capacitor uh, yes so uh, may i request you the to know the magnitude of the dc voltage mm -hmm. applied uh 2000 volts i think uh, embroj are you around on this call um i don't know embroj is in in youtube or in google meet Uh, I think it's two thousand volts. Standard. Two thousand. How much the voltage or the? Two thousand. Two thousand volts. Two thousand volts. It's what oh, no. you get from the. Yeah. 
it's not just the voltage the electric field is what matters correct so correct the yes. voltage as well as the gap between the plates so, be so specific. two but metal the, plates and the the gap is just a folded masks gap okay so uh, because the uh, uh, professor sense uh, because the area of that 95 mask is almost nearly same so in that case voltage will also do the same part uh, same thing i think i mean yeah the field is if you have large enough ah, right, metal right. plates the field is uniform okay over the mask 2000 volt okay 2000 volts yeah okay thank you sir thank you uh, okay sir uh, there is a question on the chat box by triash uh, mukherji Uh, you can see it sir is there any way that we can identify which masks are fake and which are not uh well for n95 very difficult very difficult but i can uh so first thing first thing is just remember let's let's look at the more common masks the surgical masks okay just remember that any good mask and even if you're stitching your own mask with cotton with cloth three layers at least three layers okay i'm going to i'm going to this is a cheap mask this is 2 rupees mask i'll tear it it has basically you can probably see the green and the white this had only two layers there's nothing in the middle if you take a good quality mask uh, this is uh, one of the better masks from a branded place i will now damage this i'm going to cut this mask right here Okay, so I have cut it. I'll rip it. Now you will see that there are three layers in this. There is one, two, and three, and this actually has so that the blue layer is outside, the white layer is inside, and in the middle, this is your layer of melt-blown polypropylene, which is actually doing the the the, the heavy-duty filtration. Okay, so first thing, ensure you have a three-layer mask, not a two-layer mask. if you are making your own masks if you want to stitch your masks with with you know an old genji is fantastic a t-shirt material hosiery material very good except given that i mean it's for 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 you know overall use not for 0.3 microns uh, just make sure that you don't keep the weave in the same direction for all the layers so if you have this layer this way the fibers are going this way put the middle layer at 45 degrees and the next layer something that way you increase the chance of interception okay now one thing you can do is and i don't know if professor das is still around is look at any packaging the mask comes in very carefully so here is an example of a so if it does not have if it does not have a isi uh, uh, or a, a bis number on it if it has things like this is these are like the warning signs it says ce okay ce ce has nothing to do with masks it lists a lot of these iso uh, iso certifications it's got nothing to do with masks it lists it it lists is like tested by citra i don't know if you can read this it says tested by citra citra has said do not, you know it's the south indian textile research association who uh, test fabrics they don't test masks they've written that people should not use their thing on on mask labeling uh, you know so there are there are sometimes you can you can look at you can look at it if the advertising sounds like it's this is a great mask it probably isn't so i i i can't give names of individual vendors or something there are only two there are only two niosh so n95 is actually a us designation there are only two vendors who are n95 uh, classified in india venus and magnum but there are lots of fake venuses and magnum as well i mean venus on its site tells you how to identify a fake venus mask so uh you know uh, but uh, this uh, bis some uh, abhishek is asking what is bis bureau of indian standards bureau of indian standards has laid down standards for various masks um is 9432 or something i don't remember it off my head right now but a mask has to uh, has to uh, do this okay now uh, shogoto has a question on the valve of an n95 mask fantastic i don't know the other questions related to the earlier one but uh, i would love to take that question uh, because this is something which i worked very hard wrote lots of letters to get valves banned uh, so uh, uh, just put the questions i'm just going to see if i have a valve mask lying here i 
I have literally thousands of masks over here. And yes, here we go. Uh, okay. All right. So a barbed mask. Let's open one of these. A valved mask, okay, of course, we for, we have to tape the valve up, so we've taped it, but let me remove it. So you have a lot of masks with valves like these. These are the most dangerous things on the planet, right? Do not use them. These masks were not meant for medical use at all. They are meant for people who are working on scraping walls, working in mines and dusty environments to make it easy to breathe out. This thing has a little rubber gasket. Um, let me see if I have. I should have a lot of these here. Okay, I can. I can. This has a little rubber gasket inside it, which will seal when you breathe in, but it opens when you breathe out. So on the on the way out, there is zero resistance to breathing out, which means if you have any, you know, if you are the COVID patient, all your Pathogens are going to go outside. So this is not meant for medical use at all. And, and in Indian circumstances, in the humidity that we have here, the, the, the dust load that we have, you wear this for an hour, one dust particle will definitely stick to the rubber gasket inside. Once it sticks to the rubber gasket, it, the rubber gasket will not seal and it's not going to be a good mask even on the way in. So this is very dangerous. We uh, Many of us wrote lots of letters to the government because initially this was approved by the government and we got them to change it. We got them to change it. The best thing to do if you have something like this is take the valve out and just stick some tape over it. This is a good mask. It's got It's been taped from both sides and uh, you lose this much of area, but that's, that's fine. Uh, okay, now there are more. Um, okay, great. Uh, Oh, oh, fantastic. Emroj, Emroj Hussain, uh, my student who worked on this, uh, also a uh, Scottish student, is on the call, is on the on this thing and is actually giving the answers to your uh, voltage questions uh, on the chat. Now, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Emroj has written, already uh, wrote this yeah. about 2000 so, volts. Uh, uh, so, and so thank, have... I'm taking the opportunity to thank Emroj, <laughs> my student. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Small world, uh, no? Yeah. Small world. Uh, okay. You so have a question for Shramad Jita. Uh, you on, have a question for Shramad Jita. Yes, on double masking. Uh, yes, on yes. Double masking. yes. Uh, double masking is uh, is something which is actually very strongly recommended. Uh, so, I will often use a surgical mask. Mm. And what is the problem with a surgical mask? It if you have, this one doesn't have a nose clip, it's fallen off, but normally you'll have a nose clip out here, but by design, a surgical mask is loose at the sides. Okay. Because the air is supposed to just go out from the backside. Now, which means if I'm breathing heavily, I will get some air leaking in. So then I can take a cloth mask. I can take a cloth mask and this is a cloth mask, which has some cloth. Uh, this is, uh, this is actually a, a mask, which I've got designed in Bangladesh actually with my collaborators. It's called the Shurokha mask. If you can see this. Mask. It's got yes. an extra layer of cloth at the side. So when I put this mask on top and tie it, uh, it sort of, you know, covers the sides as well. Now, one thing, nothing. Oh, the, how do you make out a fake mask? Nothing with the, with a ear strap is an N95 mask. Okay. Remember, if you want to have a good seal, if you want to have a good seal, you need some amount of force, right? The pinna, the ear, you can't take, you know, I mean, you need, you need almost 10 Newton force, which your ear will not like. It will hurt. A good mask always has straps, which you can tie behind your skull. Your skull is nice and hard. You can tie it behind your head and tie it tightly. Okay. So that's also something to be remembered that a good mask is a mask which you tie behind your head, not on your ears. Uh, Dibba I Shankar. think there is, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. a question from Dibba Shankar. 
Deepa Shankar is asking about the rechargeable mask concept. Do you think it is mass producible? If yes, why is it not in the market till date? Well, Deepa Shankar, it is. Remember that the what is in the market is not decided by science, technology, engineering. It's decided by economics. Correct. Right? Even for a very good mask like this, the Venus is the 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 proper N95 mask. This thing sells, sells. I mean, in the middle of the pandemic, it went crazy. But this thing, the MRP now is like 20 rupees. Okay. The these masks are made on automated machines. They can make, you know, hundred thousand or you know, few hundred thousand a day. These. The cost price for making it is probably four rupees, five rupees. The cost price for making some of these cheaper masks, the ones which you find in the on the roadside, as you said, is probably even less. The cost price for making these, the surgical masks, uh, which you can make five hundred thousand if you're in a thing, is also just a few rupees. It is just not cost effective to make a mask which is rechargeable. Um, you know, it's just not cost effective. That's the reason. Okay, Emroj has answered to it. Shuvayu. Uh, okay, Shuvayu is asking: Is there a difference between N95 and KN95? Very good question. N95 is a US designator. It is 95% uh, efficient at 0.3 microns. KN95 is a Chinese mask. It's a Chinese designator. So French have KF94. Koreans have some. Koreans have KF94. Um, uh, the, in Europe, it is um, FFS2 or something. So every country has its own regulations and its standards. KN95 is Chinese. These are all KN95 masks. KN95 are allowed. This, all, this says N95. Some of you might say KN95 actually. Uh, this one, for example, says KN95. I don't know if it is going to be visible in this color. Uh, but uh, KN95 are allowed to have ear loops. The Chinese thing allows ear loops. Um, uh, the decon process for them is uh, identical because the material of the mask is identical. And does the filtration efficiency remain the same for breathing in and breathing out? Um, really not too many studies on this. Um, not too many studies on this, but um, uh, effectively, I think that uh, there are not much difference except, except that uh, people have done studies. Remember, when you breathe out, you're breathing out humid air, and humidity will eventually degrade your efficiency. So, if you if you ask if you ask uh, what happens after eight hours of continuously wearing a mask, I'm sure the the, the uh, uh, efficiency is lesser. But I don't I don't think there are any studies. Uh, okay, uh, now there are hands raised by a few people. Uh, uh, so, you have a question from Shumon Maji. I think uh, that's interesting. Uh, the last one. Uh, Shumon Maji. Uh, hmm. uh, uh, okay. Masks for rural areas. For all of us, rural, urban, everything. Uh, a cloth mask is fine. For most of us, a cloth mask is fine unless you are a doctor who's going to be handling a COVID patient at close range. You are in a place which has 500 people around you. Don't go to a place with 500 people around you is my thing. Don't necessarily go to a movie theater. I mean, I, I would not go. Uh, unless you're in something like that, a normal three layer at least cloth mask is sufficient for all of us. It will protect you from the big droplets at least. Okay. And it's washable and whatever else. It will be a cloth mask has probably 90% efficiency for the larger particles. And even at 0.3 microns, it's not zero. It's probably still pr about 30% or 25% or, or something like that. So it's not going to be zero. And uh, uh, yeah, so I would just say a, a, a normal cloth mask is fine. Uh, you can also use, I mean, if, 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 I mean, if three, if three, four rupees is affordable, then these, uh, uh, too many masks here. Uh, these uh, surgical masks are also a good thing, but I think if it's a surgical mask, either it had better have a nose clip and be good. Um, otherwise, it's it's best to wear a wear something that can you know. I, if your fit is good, I think that's more important. It's 
I worry about leakage from the side. Um, okay, Rohit, what is the difference in N95 and F99? I don't know what an F99 mask is. I assume it filters 99% of something, but I have no idea what. So um, that is it. Uh, Upendranath Nundi, I have 20 masks with me. Yeah, I'm more than 20 here. Uh, which mask do I use? Uh, I use I use a surgical mask. Oops, I have cut it up now. I use normally a surgical mask, uh, and on top of it. I use a cloth mask. I use a cloth mask uh, to just tie it uh, behind. So I, I normally use this. Um, that's what I normally use. Um, okay, I think uh, uh, this is the last question from Preetha. Okay, Preetha says, if we want to decon a mask through heating at home, how much time do we need to get it done? So uh, 70 degrees, half an hour is what you need. And what I will do is, let me just see if I can paste a link um, I'll just paste a link. It's it's open source, so you can find it. Uh, basically, what you do is, if you really want to decon safely at home, if you have hot water, uh, you can boil some hot water, put it in a big dish, put a smaller dish inside, cover both, keep your mask inside for half an hour. Uh, we've shown that it remains above, and, and put a cloth around the outer vessel. We've shown that it will remain above 70 degrees for half an hour. I will uh, put the link in the, let me just find it and put the link. Um, uh, I'll have to probably search for it. Oh, uh, no, I know it's in my PowerPoint. I can get it from there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, somebody can keep ask, asking a question I can hear. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I found it. Control, control C. Um, okay. Um, so that link has everything on how to decontaminate masks at home, uh, if you want it. And uh, uh, the particles of what size get filtered out when we breathe out. So the N95 is filtering out mostly particles above 0.3 microns, 0.3 micron and above, right? But of course, the one micron obviously is the efficiency is much larger. It's probably 99% or 100, almost 100% at one micron or, or five microns or 10 microns. So, uh, Anupam, uh, can you explain inters? Okay, so suppose this is a fiber. Okay, this is a fiber. Particle comes and hits directly. That's inter you know, mechanical interception. Now, what happens if the, remember the particle is flowing around a streamline. Suppose the particle is flowing on a streamline, but it can't do the streamline. It just, it's like a car which is skidding off the road at high speed. It just goes and hits this. That's the inertial method. The inertia didn't allow it to go on the thing. And you can have diffusion. So the particle is small, but it's sort of moving around everywhere and comes and somehow hits the fiber. So these are the sort of mechanical methods that are there. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, Georgie, think, uh, Georgie, all the yeah, Yes, yes. Uh, I'm taking yes. just one minute. Sure. Uh, sir. Uh, professor Kaberi Chatterjee, she, she is a senior professor of our English department of our college. She was present in this lecture. Okay. And she is overwhelmed with the lecture presented by you. So okay. she has given you a, the thank, very thank, very thank, many, many thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh -huh. Professor Kaberi. And, and, and uh, if I can say, I think people have many more questions maybe. So if uh, can yep. we share your email ID or something that uh, they can mail you if it is possible? I just put my email in the chat. Uh, you yeah. Can definitely give so me uh, so all the all the people who are listening, if you have many more questions, you can uh, directly uh, mail to uh, Professor Bhattacharya, and uh, you will get it answered. So yep. uh, Pohitra, Jajin, yeah, Jajin, yes, just, sir, just yes. interrupting. Yes. At this point, yeah. I think it will be better for. The them to send the you collect uh, them together to and send one mail to Arnold. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That, okay. Will, that will be absolutely fine. Will that Forty will. mails will be going okay. to him. He will be busy okay, with okay, his work. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Very good idea. Okay. So I'll do it. I'll do it. So uh, you just uh, send uh, your questions to me, my email ID, and I'll send it to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Pavitra, uh, uh, you can take over. Yes. Okay. Once again, thank you, sir, for enlightening our audience. And uh, we learned much, whatever we don't know previously. Thank you for again. And now we are going to close our session. And <clears throat> for that, before that, uh, we I must thankful to my college authorities, my colleagues, all the audience for being with us. My special thank to my student who introduced you with us. Thank you. Sir. We will meet again. And thank you all of our audience. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I hope I can come to Kolkata sometime and actually uh, speak to the students and everyone there in person. And thank you for enabling me to pay my respects uh, to Professor J.C. Bhattacharya through this um, lecture. It has indeed been an honor and privilege to be at this forum. Uh, so from my side, you know, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Podito, principal ma'am, Achen, principal ma'am, Achen, to principal ma'am, ke bolu. Thank you, dear Chato. Kubi, amader kub bhalo lagye chhi. Bang pore jodi shoti eta acha popular lecture hisse be jodi amra aro beshi audience ke achhe apni bolte pare na. Amar bar bar mone hoy chile sunte sunte. To nothing like that. Ota amra chista korbo jodi apni bolte pare. In fact, there are many versions of YouTube already on YouTube. I am always willing to give a talk anytime. Not just on masks, I can talk on lots of other things as well. I mean, masks is actually not my core area of work. It was just last year, but it was really nice. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. I think we can uh, end. Oh, okay. And we are going to end. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.